Hello there, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now our smartphones all use batteries, in fact they're rechargeable batteries. And when the battery is depleted, we plug in the phone to recharge it. It's something that we do almost every day, sometimes without even thinking. We just plug in our phone and off we go and do something else. But since it's something that we do every day, wouldn't it be nice if we could actually find out which phones charge the fastest? Well, we've done some tests and today we're gonna to find out which are the fastest charging phones on the market today. So if you're ready, let's go. Now before we look at the actual phones and the results, just let me tell you something quickly about how mobile phone batteries charge. The battery in a mobile phone charges in two phases. The initial phase charges a phone rapidly up to 80%, and then the last 20% uses less energy and actually takes a bit longer to reach that top level. That's why quick charging technologies like Quick Charge 2.0 from Qualcomm or Quick Charge 3.0 can say the phone is charged to 80% in so many minutes because that is the first phase of the charging cycle. However, the second phase of the charging cycle can actually take much longer than we maybe would think because there's less and less energy being put into the mobile phone. Now, as well as just measuring how many minutes it takes to charge these phones, we've also used a special little dongle to tell us how much volts and how much amps are being drawn by the phone to charge up its battery. And that gives us an interesting graph that shows us those two distinct charging cycles. So what phones did we use? Well, here is a list of the phones in alphabetical order. The BlackBerry Priv, the Galaxy Note 5, the HTC One M9, the Huawei Mate S, the LG G3, the LG G4, the LG V10, the Moto X Force, the Moto X Style, the Nexus 6P, the Oppo R5, the Sony Z5, the Sony Z5 Premium, and the Asus Zenfone 2. So amongst those phones, we get a quite a range of different battery sizes and a different range of charging technologies. Let's start by looking at the battery sizes. As you can see, the Oppo R5 has the smallest battery size at just 2,000 milliamps, followed by the Mate S and the one HTC One M9. Then we see in the middle quite a block of phones, including the Note 5, the LG G3, the LG G4, and so on, that use a 3,000 milliamp hour battery. Now, 3,000 milliamp seems to be the median battery size in our group for this test today. And then towards the bottom, we see some phones with some larger batteries, including the BlackBerry Priv, the Z5 Premium, the Nexus 6P, and lastly, with the biggest battery, the Moto X Force, which has a battery of 3,750 milliamp hours. Now, some of those phones just use a normal charging circuit. Some of them use a quick charging circuit like Qualcomm Quick Charge 2.0 and its variations from Samsung and from Motorola. So it'll be interesting to see how quickly they can all charge up their batteries. So I want to start off by showing you the charging profile of the Huawei Mate S. It doesn't have any particular quick charging technology and it just uses a normal five volt, two amp charger. So let's have a see what its profile looks like. So as you can see, this phone draws 7.5 watts from the charger for an hour and a half. Now it does this level of 7.5 watts by using 5.1 volts and 1.46 amps. Now as the battery level reaches 80%, the amount of watts going into the battery starts to decrease. It drops down to five watts at one hour 40 minutes and right down to two watts at the two hour mark. In fact, it goes down to almost one watt as the battery reaches 100%. Now the total charging time is over two hours for the Huawei Mate S. Now the Huawei doesn't have any particular quick charging technology. However, let's have a look at a phone that does have some quick charging technology, namely the HTC One M9. Now, as you can see here, the phone starts by charging at 12 watts, and it does that for the first 40 minutes. And then it creeps down to 10 watts as we go past the hour mark. And then when the battery reaches 70% of its charge, the amount of wattage starts to drop significantly. And in fact, in the end, it goes under two watts. And this gives a total charging time of also over two hours. So we can see the difference between a normal charging circuit and a quick charging circuit by the number of watts that are drawn from the charger by the phone. However, that didn't really seem to affect the overall charging time. Well, let's have a look at another example. 
what we see here is the charging profile of the Motorola Moto X Force. And as you can see, it starts by drawing 20 watts, and it does that for around half an hour. And then as the phone hits its about 70% mark, it starts to drop significantly. However, never goes under five watts. And as a result of that, we can see that it has a charging time of one hour and nine minutes. So we can see that if enough energy is pumped into the battery by the charger, then the battery can be charged quite quickly. If you want to see more charging profiles, if you want to see more graphs of the amount of wattage and the battery levels and the time index used to charge each of these phones, please go over to the androidauthority.com website where you'll see more of them in the written companion that goes along with this video. Now that we've looked at the charging profiles, it's time to look at which phones actually charge the fastest. So without further ado, here are the results. And as we can see, with that 20 watts of charging during its initial phase, the Moto X Force is the phone that charges the quickest at just 69 minutes. That's followed closely behind by the Moto X Style, the LG V10, and then slightly a bit longer, the Galaxy Note 5. Now what's interesting here is the LG G3, which is a relatively old phone, still does a very good job in charging and is able to charge its battery in under 100 minutes. Down at the other end of the scale, we see the Sony Z5 and the BlackBerry Priv both have very long charging times, longer in fact than the Huawei Mate S that we looked at originally earlier on in this video. In fact, the BlackBerry Priv sticks out quite differently there from all the other phones. So it's very interesting to see which phones charge the fastest. However, since they all have different battery sizes, it would also be interesting to see which phones actually charge at the highest rate. So in the next graph, I've taken the number of minutes taken to charge the phone and the battery size to calculate which phones actually charge the phones fastest per minute. So let's have a look. And it's no surprise with that 20 watts of charging during its initial charging phase, the Moto X Force is still at the top. In fact, so is the Moto X Style and the LG V10 and the Galaxy Note 5. We also find that the LG G4 and the LG G3 are in that top list. However, there are some changes towards the bottom. For example, the Oppo R5 has the smallest battery in our group, but actually it also has the lowest charge rate. And although the BlackBerry Priv was the slowest, it's not actually the slowest phone in terms of how much it charges per minute. Talking of the R5, I just wanted to mention that Oppo does have its own quick charging technology, one that uses five volts, but at four amps to give a total of 20 watts. However, we tested the R5 and the R7, and we couldn't get them to go above the normal 1.5 or 1.8 amps during the charging cycle. It would have been nice to see that because the Oppo R5 has only a 2000 milliamp hour battery, and it would be lovely to see how quickly that could charge using 20 watts. However, in our testing, it never seemed to kick in. So sorry about that. So what does all this mean? Well, clearly the charging technology from Motorola is the best. The Moto X Force and the Moto X Style are the top of our charging tables. And LG seems to do a pretty good job of charging their devices because the LG V10, the LG G4 and the LG G3 are all in our top six. And we mustn't forget, of course, the Samsung Galaxy Note 5, which also has a good rating in our tables. At the other end of the table, we see that Sony and BlackBerry don't have a very strong showing. And personally, I was expecting more from these two very well-known companies. Well, please do use the comments below to tell me what you think about the charging times of these devices. Is charging time something that sways your decision when you come to choose a new mobile phone? Or don't you just care because you just plug it in overnight and the next morning the phone is charged and it doesn't really make any difference to you? Also, please don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Also, you can follow me and Android Authority on uh, social media. Don't forget to check out the other videos that we are producing for you. And as for me, I'll see you in my next video.